Hello and welcome to Offrey Movie Recaps, in this video I will recap a 2014 mystery thriller movie. Set sometime before Nigeria's independence, titled October 1st. The movie opens with pictures of a young woman being assaulted by an unidentified man before killing her. The British Colonial Army recruits Inspector Dan Lady Waziri to present a draft of his findings into the string of virgin killings that have occurred in Akute. The movie flashback as Inspector Waziri describes his impressions and experiences from his arrival in the town of Akute, where he is received by Sergeant Sunday Afunja. Upon entering the town, Dan Laddie Waziri notices the locals applauding a horse rider. Afunja noted that the rider is Prince Aderopo the only son of Oba of Akute, who just finished his degree studies and had just returned from Ibadan City. Later that day at the morgue. As a result of his familiarity with the departed, Afunja could not bear to view their body. While Waziri goes ahead to examine the bodies, he sees similarities between the two bodies and presumes that these were in fact serial killings. The plot then moves to the scene of the second murder. Proper police protocols for securing a crime scene weren't followed and that outraged Waziri. He then explained to Afunja that locating the dead is only one part of investigating a crime. They then went to meet with farmer Agbekoya, who had found the dead woman on his property. Agbekoy might have known something important that could have led to the murders. But Waziri let him go because he couldn't speak Koya's native Yoruba and Afunja was a terrible translator. Later that night, as the prince gets ready to go out, the Oba cautions him to exercise caution during his late night movements. On his way he meets Waziri and Afunja who were going to the palace, they exchanged pleasantries and he wishes them luck in solving their case. At the village bar Prince Aderopo meets his childhood friends, Banji and Tawa, the three talks about their pasts and impending independence. Mr. Ola Atun, a local headmaster who harbors affections for Tawa, later joined them in conversations. He and Adaropo hold conflicting viewpoints, which was clear to the rest of the group. A guard tasked with watching over the prince leaves his position to spend time with his girlfriend beside a stream. On their way out of the Oba's palace, Afunja and Waziri question the traditional priest, Baba Ifa. He replies with what appears to be proverbs and declares that the murderer will keep killing until he is content. The next day, the guard's lover's body is found, Waziri is not shocked because the manner in which she was slain fits the pattern of the previous killings. After looking around the crime scene, he noticed writings on the ground, which made him believe that she had a rendezvous with someone right before she passed away and that person needed to be found. The town has an 8pm to 6am curfew, checkpoints at every intersection, and police reinforcement from nearby towns. Two weeks later, as the murder rate rose to 4, there were still no suspects, and the inspector and his assistant ran into several dead ends. They considered what characteristics each of the victims shared. Waziri couldn't rule out the likelihood of ritual killings because they were all virgins. Therefore, he issued an arrest warrant for Baba Ifa, but Afunja fails to execute it because it would be improper. He is fired by Waziri for disobedience, and Corporal Omulodu is appointed in his place. Meanwhile, while Tawa is teaching, Adero Po observes the class but stays outside. She wanted to introduce him to her students, which he thought was unnecessary. He had the best education of the two of them because he was a beneficiary of the former reverend in the neighborhood, and she claimed that should be sufficient justification for introducing him to her class. His expression quickly changes, and he responds with a mysterious phrase that has Tawa in thoughts. Later, he invited her to lunch. Mr. Ola Atun enviously observes as they depart together. Baba Ifa reiterated that he doesn't know the killer during a conversation with Waziri and Corporal Amulodu while they were at his home hoping to arrest him. Baba Ifa also said that he would kill again and that he would only be caught when he is satisfied. Instead of making the intended arrest, they thanked him and left. The prince's bodyguard spots them on their way back from Baba Ifa's and starts to flee. Omulodu cries out for him. With his initials written by the dead girl on the ground, Waziri realized he might be the person of interest. He therefore gave the order to Omulo Du, to pursue and detain him. The guard confessed to leaving her by the stream and returned to the prince while being questioned, saying he couldn't have killed the girl since he loved her. She was literate, although he is not, her mother didn't approve of their affair, so they met in secret, and he was too terrified to speak up when she was killed. He was held in custody while additional investigations were made. The following day, when checking the evidence at the police station, Waziri discovers that the lacerations made on the victim's chests was the crucifix. The prior reverend's relationship with the locals was something he wanted to find out about, so he went to the neighborhood church. He learns from Reverend Father Cannon that before his transfer, the late British-bound reverend made significant contributions to the community, including sponsoring the Oba's son through university. 
Later on that evening, he visits a fungus home. He sits down and begins to dine with him when he spots a drawing on a fungus son's arm that makes him think of his deceased son. Considering the lack of murder since the palace guard's detention, they talked about how likely it was that he was the killer. After that, he reinstated Sergeant Afunja, citing his disobedience as a moral act. Amalaju entered abruptly to report the disappearance of another girl. A search party is put together for the search of the Igbo girl, Amalaju sees a distant figure, goes to take a look without notifying the other policeman. The search party finds the Igbo girl dead, that in itself exonerates the palace guard from being the killer. Back to the rogue policeman, he catches up with the killer, he orders him to face him. Surprised by who the killer is, he lets his guard down and the prince slits his throat with a razor. When the prince hears the other police officers coming in search of Amalaju, he flees. Amalaju passes away before he could reveal who the murderer is. The girl's father, Hunter Okafor, alongside his tribesmen, catch a voyaging house a northerner, and guarantee he killed the hunter's daughter, since he has a necklace belonging to the girl. Afterwards, the house a man is detained and taken to the police station to be questioned. He maintains his innocence throughout the inspector's questioning and admits he is just a traveler who plans to spend the night in a coute. He got lost in the forest and tried to ask the man who dropped the necklace for directions, but it was too dark, and the man vanished into the night. He collected the necklace in order to sell it and pay for his bus fare. However, while he was trying to find his way, he was picked up by the mob. He started to hum a sound that the man he saw made, and when Waziri hears it, he can identify it. He then gave the order to let the palace guard go. The Igbo community goes to the police station with the intention of bringing the man to justice on their own, claiming that Waziri may be biased because the man is his tribesman. And they knew that since it wasn't the first time he let one of their people get executed. However, they were forced to retreat since the police station is under the protection of the colonial masters. The next day, Corporal Amalaju is buried and the prince is sent by the Oba to pay respects to the police force. He also informs Waziri that he would depart for new academic endeavors on October 1st, the country's projected Independence Day. He keeps looking back as he leaves the prince, seemingly apprehensive about something. Waziri still uncertain if he has the right suspect, requires more time from Robert Winterbottom a colonial officer on a visit, he orders Waziri to transfer the suspect to the prison the next day. Sometime later, Tawa and Aderopo are having a picnic, he extensively flirt with Tawa and she seemed to enjoy it. He inquired about her virgin status. She says she had a relationship with someone when she was training to be a teacher and it amounted to nothing just like they did back then. He promised to make amend with a marriage proposal in due time, then she will join him overseas. Furthermore, he tells her of their childhood secret hideout, how he renovated it and hopes to invite her someday. Back at the police station, the northerner is being taken away from Akute. Okafor tosses a machete at him, puncturing his heart. Indeed, even with his perishing breath, the man demands he didn't kill the young lady. Okafor, who more than once insists his activities as doing what a genuine man would do, is arrested. Around evening time, the officials gathered at the village bar to commend the inspector's looming takeoff following the assumed triumph over the killer. Despite his intention to abstain, Waziri is persuaded to drink. They asked about the accusation he faced from the Igbo people, he said that he wasn't particularly proud of it and went on to describe what had taken place. The Igbo man who got hanged for killing a white man only seeked revenge for his father, after being flogged to death for stealing chicken from the white man. He asked to be excused. On the way out, he hears someone sing a song that the northerner had earlier identified as coming from the murderer. He is too dazed to recognize the killer's face as he approaches, and the killer then attacks him. When Afunja discovers him laying on the street, he brings him to his house. He receives spices from Afunja and his wife to treat his ongoing guitar. He remembers the murderer's face as he is getting better from his fever. The following morning, he visits the market square to watch Prince Adaropo's body language. Prince Adaropo gives him a curiously confident glare and even gives him a wink. Waziri visits Tawa in the school to scrutinize her about the relationship she has with the prince. Waziri finds from Tawa that Adaropo and Agbekoya are the two beneficiaries of a grant from the Reverend Father in the town, Father Dowling. Waziri then visits Agbekoya, he informs him that he knew about his academic success despite Agbekoya's pretense that he doesn't still understand English. He retorted when Waziri touched him after purposefully pressing and hoping to infuriate him. He reveals to Waziri that they were often violated by the Reverend Father in Lagos. He had left after five months but Adaropo cherished education so he stayed six years. He told Waziri that he assassinated the Reverend four years ago just as he was about to be named a bishop. He had anticipated that Waziri would detain him, 
but he didn't since it's not the murder he is looking into. Then, he informs Waziri that he has managed his rage and isn't to blame for the killings. Afunja was unable to accept the prince's likely role in the murder after Waziri told him everything. Waziri then receives a telegram revealing Adaropo's return to Akute one week prior in hiding. At a festival just before independence. Adaropo approaches Tawa as the festivities are in progress. He asks her to meet him at their hidden hut. Because, like a proper gentleman, he wants to make the proposal in private. Adaropo was visible to Waziri and his assistant, but they were unable to apprehend him because their case was entirely hypothetical. Adaropo would be leaving for London the following morning, Waziri recalled. He and Afunja made the decision to follow him. Mr. Ola Atun is approached by Adaropo since he knows he has affections for Tawa. In spite of her prior rejection, he should still approach Tawa tonight, he says, because she shares his feelings. He offered to take them to Tawa. Ola Atun follows him in jubilation. Adaropo uses a towel soaked in chloroform to incapacitate Mr. Ola Atun as they approach the secret hut where Tawa is waiting. At the party, Banji is questioned by Waziri about Adaropo's whereabouts. Banji admits that the last time he saw him was with Tawa. Waziri remarked that she might be in danger after that admission. Overhearing this, Agbekoya claims to know where they are and lead the way. Adaropo joins Tawa. They shared a drink he bought in Lagos while returning from Reverend Dowling's place. She accuses him of missing him, he only grunts. She compliments him on how fortunate he was to have been the reverend's choice, which enraged him. He goes out of his way to tell her that the reverend had raped him for six years, and that he is now back in Akute to exact revenge by raping and killing six virgins. Because he is in pain, the community must also suffer along with him. He then attacked her. Meanwhile, Waziri and the others find Mr. Ola Atun on the floor. He checked to make sure he is still alive. He perceives chloroform and understands he is being framed. Agbekoya shows them the hut and they ran towards it. Tawa pleads while wrestling with Adero Po. She tells him you're going to take something from me that I'd give you with all my heart? I don't want you to give it to me, I want to snatch it, just like my innocence was snatched he says. He tells her, she is the last of the six virgins, she tells him she wasn't a virgin and that she had a lover while in teacher's training. A break-in by Inspector Waziri causes him to flee. Agbekoya accompanies Waziri as they pursue Adaropo because he is familiar with the area. Agbekoya is taken hostage by Adaropo, who threatens to slice his throat just like he did the policeman's. Waziri assures him he knows his anguish, then goes on to tell him about the horrific accident in which he lost his wife and son. Adaropo demands that Waziri surrender his firearm, but Waziri refuses. As Adaropo throws his prisoner aside, Waziri sees an opening and takes advantage of it. Adaropo collapses and dies on the floor. The video then returns to the present day. As Inspector Waziri wraps up his story to the British officers. The officers are opposed to his wish to reveal the identity of the true killer and advise him not to tell anyone. For the sake of peaceful independence, he reluctantly concedes to their requests. That is all for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe, and like to help grow the channel.